Hello everyone. So welcome back to Medicine Lectures by Dr. Rajesh Roy. I am making uh, this uh, video uh, after quite a few time because I was busy, busy with my daily schedule. So uh, one thing that I have noticed in this period while I was uh, taking some postgraduate exams and undergraduate exams, I have noticed that uh, students usually suffer and struggle to demonstrate uh, the CNS reflexes in the exams. How to demonstrate them? what are the normal causes, what is the root value, they struggle with all these things. So I thought why not to make a video wherein I show how to demonstrate the CNS reflexes, the basic reflexes, so that it becomes easier for you to elicit in your exams uh, and to examine the routine daily patients. So today we are going to see how to elicit the biceps reflex, the supinator reflex, the triceps reflex, knee reflex, ankle reflex and the plantar reflex. These are the few reflexes that we do on our daily basis, hence I am going to show this in uh, short detail. Uh, we are not going to go into the details of the causes of abnormal reflexes and all, but this is just to show how to elicit them properly without committing major mistakes in the exams. So quickly we will first show how to elicit the biceps reflex. For the biceps reflex, the basic rule is that you rest the patient's hand on your hand, this is the patient's right upper limb, so I will rest the patient's forearm on my left forearm this is the tendon of the biceps muscle so I will rest my left thumb and will press the tendon and with the point of the rubber hammer I will strike my thumb the left thumb so that there is a contraction of the biceps muscle and slight flexion of the uh, uh, left uh, right elbow so this is how you elicit the biceps reflex this is the biceps reflex the root value for biceps reflex is uh, C5 and the peripheral nerve is musculocutaneous nerve. So if you can see from the other side, I will again show how to check for the biceps reflex. This is the right hand of the patient and this is the right biceps reflex. You see the contraction of the biceps muscles? This is biceps reflex. Similarly, <clears throat> if we first elicit the supinator reflex, we will rest the patient's hand in semi pronated position and will give a strike at the upper lower border of the forearm, forearm where you will get a contraction of the forearm muscles. This is supinator reflex which, which has a root value of C5-6 and the peripheral nerve is radial nerve. Coming to the triceps reflex, you rest the hand of the patient on the patient's abdomen. You keep your concentration of the triceps muscle and with the broad part or the flat part of the rubber hammer, you give a strike to the tendon of the triceps. And you see there will be a contraction, there is a slight contraction of the triceps muscle with a root value of C67 and the nerve involved is radial nerve again. You can also rest the hand like this and give a and give a strike to the triceps muscle which again will show a contraction. So we will not go into the detail where the reflexes will be exaggerated or where they will be depressed. We just are seeing how to elicit these reflexes. Coming straight away to the uh, knee reflex, the knee reflex root value is L234 and the peripheral nerve involved is the femoral nerve. So for, <coughs> excuse me, for the bicep, uh, for the knee reflex, we just want, a, want some support from the other uh, knee of the patient and supporting the right knee with my left hand, I am taking support of the left knee of the patient. Now this is the patella tendon where I will give a strike and there will be contraction quadriceps the leg slightly extend with the broad part of the rubber hammer I will strike and see there is a slight movement and flexion there is a slight movement of the uh, extension of the knee and there is contraction of the quadriceps see very nice reflex I am getting from this patient if you can see from this side also see the movement I am concentrating on the muscle as well. So this is how you check for the knee reflex. Similarly on the other side you can check. To check for the ankle reflex which has a root value of L5 S1, I will just keep the foot, the right foot on the shin of the left side. I will try to dorsiflex the foot so that the tendon of this of this uh, gastrocnemus soleus muscle is stretched with the broad part of my rubber hammer I will give a stroke to the tendo achilles so that it contracts the gastrocnemus muscle soleus muscle and there is a slight plantar flexion which you can feel uh, with the strike 
there is a contraction of the if you can see from the top also if you can show it from the top like this see there will be movement of the ankle there will be contraction of the gastrocnemius muscle this is how and the movement should be very uh, free at your wrist joint so that it should not be a stiff like this it should be a very gentle and free as if the uh, the rubber hammer is automatically falling on the ankle it should be a free movement of your hand so that you get a very clear reflex but remember it will not come without practice so after watching this video i request everyone to go and practice on your patients so that you become accustomed to elicit these reflexes these are very important for clinical examinations because today uh, we have forgotten how to do clinical practice and my emphasis as a professor in medicine as a clinician i always emphasize on eliciting the clinical reflexes seeing the patient clinically so that before you send him to the examinations you know investigations you know that what to do and what you expect from the mri and ct scan machines coming last to the plantar reflex again which has a root value of s12 uh, the plantar reflex usually is positive in uh, uh, in upper motor neuron lesions like stroke here you start from the lateral part of the heel gently and slide see there is a flexion there was a flexion of the finger like this which is normal plantar reflex so you start from the lateral part of the heel slide along the lateral part of the foot and go until the base of the big toe like this and see the reflex the the great toe and the other toes were flexing they were plantar there was a plantar flexion which is a normal plantar reflex if you do it repeatedly the foot will fatigue and you will get an absent uh, <coughs> uh, plantar reflex plantar reflex is a very important sign for cns involvement however if if you think for example if you feel that the patient is not giving a very good uh, plantar reflex or babinski sign or you think that the pyramidal involvement is very minimal in that case if you come can come to this side in that case you can just strike the lateral dorsum of the foot so that you get a babinski sign so for minimal pyramidal involvement you can just also strike the lateral part of the dorsum of the foot where you can get a babinski sign some other other techniques which i will not go into detail is the gordon technique where you just press the tendoacalis tendon and you get this uh, babinski test positive open hims method where you just strike the lower part of the front of the uh, foot where you get the positive uh, babinski uh, test these are some of the and sometimes you uh, also have something called the shadox method where you tap the lateral malleolus and you get a positive babinski test so these are uh, some of the other techniques where you can elicit the babinski uh, reflex last point suppose a patient has come to you with pyramidal tract involvement where you expect that the plantar reflex will be extensor i mean abnormal but for example the patient has got amputated bilateral lower limbs because of diabetes how to elicit babinski's test in such patients for such patients we have some something called as the wartenberg's test which is equivalent to plantar uh, to babinski's uh, reflex of lower limb which is also seen in upper uh, motor neuron or pyramidal tract involvement where you tell the patient to uh, uh, just uh, supinate and uh, 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 try to clench my semi folded uh, fingers like this and i pull the hand of the patient see for this patient look at his thumb the thumb is getting abducted it is going out this is my thumb and this is the patient's thumb the patient's thumb is going out see it is going out as i am pulling he is taking the thumb out this is normal wartenberg's test what happens in cases of upper motor neural lesion where both the foot is uh, amputated and you want to check for the babinski's this come closer this thumb will flex and it will start adducting and the patient will adduct like this this is this i have made this is artificial this patient earlier on was showing the normal reflex of abduction but in upper motor neuron paralysis the patient's hand will become like this this is equivalent this is abnormal the hand should, the thumb should not adduct if the thumb is flexing and getting adducted while you are pushing it it is a positive babinski's test on the upper limb which is equivalent to babinski's reflex on the lower limb in cases where both limbs are amputated so i hope you will start eliciting these basic reflexes the way i have shown from today itself so that as the time passes you become masters of clinical examination if you have any doubt you can just mail me you know my mail address uh, and i hope i'll be able to come up with similar series for the benefit of medical field 
थैंक यू सो मच